Well, hello there and welcome to School of the Spirit. I'm so excited that you are on this platform and I believe that all the episodes have richly uh, blessed and edified you in the matters of the things of the Spirit. And this is why we are here. Everything we do here is centered on developing yourself spiritually, understanding the things of the Spirit, and then growing deeper in your knowledge of God. We've been talking about spiritual discernment. And in the last episode, uh, we started an introductory on spiritual discernment, which is a very broad concept as far as um, the scriptures are concerned. But we're going to take it deep by deep and we're going to be as simplified as we can so that you can understand one of the greatest treasures of a believer in these last days is the ability to spiritually discern here's how paul puts it in in colossians 1 verse 9 paul said that you will be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding your ability to distinguish in details by the help of the spirit of god facts and truths about things and and seen to the very source of all things is what spiritual discernment is all about as a matter of fact spiritual discernment goes deeply into the distinguishing of good from evil of counterfeit from genuine of spiritual from carnal and of truth from true or from truth and falsehood so your ability to understand to know to distinguish to rightly judge the source of things the authenticity of things is what discernment is all about and when you are able to do that by the help of the holy spirit it's called spiritual discernment in hebrews chapter 5 verse 13 the bible speaks of um, a company of believers who by reason of use are able to discern both good and evil the bible says that by reason of use they have their senses discerned towards good and evil that means that every believer has what we call spiritual senses just like in the natural you have uh, five major senses the sense of um, sight which is in your eyes the sense of taste which is on your tongue the sense of smell which is through your nose the sense of hearing which is through your ears and the sense of feeling which is through your skin so also you have senses that are spiritual your spiritual being your spirit man has senses to discern and to sense the spiritual realm the environment around you and this is not um, the teaching for that but definitely we are going to have time to talk about spiritual senses if we really need to understand what discernment um, is all about but the bible speaks of growing in maturity growing in discernment when you are able to exercise your senses towards good and evil that means that the maturity of discernment in a believer is based on their ability to distinguish to determine to distinct and to size and this is really important to be known about spiritual discernment it's also important that you know that spiritual discernment is um, a little bit different from discerning of spirits now discerning of spirit is one of the gifts of the spirit mentioned by paul the apostle in his letter to the church of corinth you find that in first corinthians chapter 12 from verse 7 down to verse 11 he mentioned all the spiritual gifts the nine spirits gifts of the spirit these are the gifts of the spirit manifesting in the believer and one of them was the discerning of spirits but discerning of spirit which is a gift 
operated by the Holy Spirit through a believer is different from spiritual discernment. Whilst it is the Holy Spirit's choice to determine which believer works in which spiritual gift, spiritual discernment is available for every believer. This is, this is not just a gift, it's in it. It's an innate ability that should be developed, that every believer grow in their level of spiritual discernment. So today we want to talk about discerning the voice of God. Perhaps we'll have like two episodes to talk about it and then maybe have a practical session uh, for this. Discerning the voice of God. God speaks. God is a living being. He speaks. He communicates by speaking. As a matter of fact, the entire Bible is a compendium of the thoughts of God spoken to men. God spoke through the Holy Spirit to men, different men in different dispensations. And as they penned down what they perceived was the speakings or where the speakings of God, um, it was compiled to become the Bible. And God is a speaking spirit. He is a speaking spirit. He's always speaking. As a matter of fact, you find him speaking in the beginning of the Bible. And even at the end of the Bible, you find him speaking. He communicates by speaking. The first thing you find in creation is the speech of God. You know, it's often said in physics, naturally, that light travels faster than sound. But when you bring down the context of the creation story, you discover that sound went forth before light. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. In that sentence, you see that sound came before light. And God said, What is said must be heard for impact. What is said must be heard for action, for corresponding action. And God said, said that tells you how important the speakings of god is and when a believer is born again you are born of the spirit and brought into the family of god who is your father and it therefore means that if you must communicate with god and have a growing relationship with him you must be able to discern how he speaks you must be able to distinguish between the voice of god and the voice of others around you whether in your thoughts or in your heart or in any way that he communicates to you so how can we discern the voice of god you can discern the voice of god by understanding the ways through which god speaks Firstly, you must understand the ways through which God speaks. Number one, he speaks through his word. John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word of God is so important to God that there is nothing he has said, he is saying or will say that cannot be captured within the context of his word. So, God speaks through his word. In fact, the word of God is so important that he must do what he has said. In Psalms 138, I believe in verse 5, um, he says that all the kings shall praise you when they hear the words of your mouth. And I believe verse 4 that says uh, he honors his word more than his name. In Isaiah 55, verses 11, it says, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void, but shall accomplish the thing that I preached and prosper in the thing wherein I sent it. So God speaks, number one, through his word. Number two, God speaks through the voice of the Spirit. Through the voice of the Spirit. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit of God speaks. And so the voice of the Spirit has been factored into our being on account of our being born again. 
and are being new creations in Christ Jesus. So you must be able to discern the voice of the Spirit, which is one of the modes of divine communication. Number three, God speaks through his vessels. A man or woman of God, especially one authorized by God um, over your life, to play the role of shepherding you in the knowledge of God. Jeremiah 3.15 says, I will send you pastors and teachers after my heart to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Isaiah 30 verses 20 says, Though the Lord give you the water of adversity and the bread of affliction, yet your teachers will not be taken from your sight, but your eyes will see your teachers and your ears. Verse 21, will hear a voice behind you that says, This is the way walk therein when you turn to the right or to the left. God speaks through authorized, appointed vessels of his through your life. All right, and there are many scriptures to buttress that point. God also speaks through nature. All right. In fact, the writings of the psalmist communicate interacting with God by meditating or musing on creation. In fact, in Psalms 8 verse 4, it says, When I consider the heavens and the earth and the works of your hands, what is man that you are mindful of? So every time the psalmist interacted with nature, he could perceive the speakings of God. He could perceive the knowledge of God communicated. So God speaks through nature. God speaks through events. God speaks through times. Uh, speaks in times and seasons. All right? These and many ways by which God speaks. So the first thing you need to do is to understand how God speaks. When you understand how God speaks, it is also important to ask yourself these few questions. When you hear what you think is the voice of God, for you to discern the voice of God in what you have heard, there are a few questions you must ask yourself. But I want to read to you a, 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 a two, two scriptures actually um, to help you with that. First of all, John chapter 10 verses 27. John chapter 10 verses 27, which is a very popular scripture. John chapter 10 verse 27. He says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep can hear my voice, and they can follow me. Let's read from verse 1 of John chapter 10. Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, for they can discern his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of the strangers for they do not know the voice of strangers that means that when you are born again inbuilt in you is the ability to naturally hear the voice of god but then you must discern what you hear to be sure that it is the voice of god first corinthians chapter 14 another scripture that speaks about voices which is important for our understanding of this subject. 1 Corinthians 14 from verse 7, it says, Even things without life, whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in the sounds, how will it be known what is piped or played? For if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who would prepare for battle? So likewise you, unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the earth. There are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world. 
and none of them is without significance. When you read verse 10 in King James' translation of the Bible, it says, There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Every voice is significant. Every voice is distinct. Whether it's the voice of the Spirit of God, whether it is the voice of your mind, whether it is the voice of the tempter, the devil, whether it's the voice of people's opinions, every voice is significant. But how do you discern God's voice from all the other voices? Because we have a lot of people who struggle with hearing so many voices. And just so you know, it is normal to experience that as you grow in understanding divine communications. And that's why this series is for you. Let me give you a few steps to discerning God's voice every time you hear something. Number one, does it come with a sense of peace and comfort? The psalmist says, I can't get the scripture, but I'm sure it will be it, it, it will be flashed on the screen now. It says, for our way to hear what God will say to his people, for he will speak peace to them. Does it come with peace and comfort? Or do you feel troubled and confused after hearing it? If there is peace and comfort, you heard the voice of God. But if there is none, then you heard the voice of someone else. Number two, does it come with assurance and conviction? Are you sure? Does it bring to you a form of certainty with what you just heard? Number three, is it spoken in an instructive manner? Sometimes God may be suggestive to you. That's the voice of the Spirit. But you see, the thing is, God is king. And because of that, even when he tries to sound suggestive, he speaks with so much authority that it comes with a note of affirmation. Because that's how a, a king speaks. In fact, in those days, kings, once they speak, their words could not be revoked. And that's how God speaks. And then number four, can you find a scriptural backing for what you have heard? Number five, do you find a confirmation or a confirmatory witness to what you have heard from someone else or on something that the Lord had spoken to you prior to that time? These are five signs that could help you. Number six, when you pray about what you have heard, do you hear it again without changing? If you hear something different, you didn't hear from God. But if you pray about it and you heard it again, God is speaking. The psalmist says in Psalm 62, I believe, he says, Once has he spoken, twice have I heard that power belongs to God. If God has spoken, when you pray about it, you will hear the same thing again. For God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23, 19. Neither the son of man that he should repent of his words if you practice these six signs and more that the holy spirit will reveal to you through scriptures then you can discern the voice of god i'll see you in the next episode let me know how this has blessed you thank you so much